Hiya there, I've put this uh, video together to show you the updates that I've made in this um, email edition uh, and how it works and uh, to discuss whether it's going to work for you or not. It won't work for everybody but for most people it will. Okay, so the first thing uh, uh, is in the user details form now I've put this uh, these three items down at the bottom and the first one is this email enabled tick box and if that's ticked it, uh, the emails work and if it's not ticked they don't and what I mean by that is if we go down to reports and remind you, you can see there's an email option here and a non-email option and they're greyed out and disabled okay so back to where we were so we'll tick that you've got to put a subject in here uh, this is the one I made up uh, your appliance is due for servicing soon straight to the point and short and you also need to uh, place an email footer uh, in here Possibly, it depends on your emailing software because this uses your emailing software to send the emails out, which I'm going to show you and tell you about in a bit. Uh, so, if there's no footer on there, you just put something in there, and uh, again, 100 characters max, so something short and to the point. Okay, so we're all happy there. Now, I'll just talk you through these uh, dummy clients that I've put in here and fundamentally what happens if you if you're sending out by email um, when you run a, a batch of service reminders uh, it'll look for the email address being present in this field here uh, and if it's there it'll it'll send them an email and if it's not as in the case of hold on this one uh, as you can see the email field is blank uh, but I have got their email address and put it in notes and this one will be skipped and you'll send out a normal letter to them and this happens with some people uh, some people prefer to, to receive a letter uh, and if your uh, your customer uh, prefers that then I can't see why you wouldn't do it okay so back to the beginning and you can see here this lady's uh, service is due on the 1st of the 6th 2015 um, this gentleman's services due on the 13th of the 6th 2015 so you can see these are all going to come out in June 2015 uh, this is the 8th of the 6th 2015 and again on to the end and this is the 13th of the 6th 2015 but no email address so this will be uh, picked up by the second part uh, of, of that process which I'm going to show in a moment and last but not least if we go here you can see there's a, a boiler service there but that's not due until August so that won't be picked up in this batch all right so again to reiterate if I went through that a bit fast got an email address it's going out on the uh, it needs service in uh, in June got an email address need servicing in June got an email address need servicing in June hasn't got an email address needs servicing in June so we're going to send out three reminders by email and one by letter so to do that go to reports reminder and you can see now that's email and non-email are highlighted and ready to roll okay so we enter I'm going to run this for two months from the 1st of the 6th through to the 31st of the 7th all right and that will pick up those three quite easily uh, first thing to show if you're used to the uh, normal version of service reminder plus you'll see what I've done here on the summary report is I've listed the clients phone number down the right hand side of the sheet so if you want to contact your people by uh, telephone uh, you can do so quite easily now without having to scan through the, uh, the entire database the letter will use Service Reminder Plus as the basic version and it'll just print out the four letters that we've uh, uh, that I showed you or the, the, it'll print out letters for four people as I showed you before and if we preview that and I just do that see we've got one of four it says there and there you go All right, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do the email. Now the email takes the letter and puts it into email format. And now just a word about that. Before I press this button, 
and I said at the start of the video that this works for some people not but not all people you must have desktop based emailing software on your computer and what I mean by that is Microsoft Windows Live Mail uh, Outlook, Outlook Express uh, I've tried it with all those three and it works 10 times out of 10 absolutely bulletproof the ones it won't work with reliably are web based ones as in Hotmail that you access through a web browser you can use a Hotmail but you must do it through Windows Live Mail the Windows Live Mail software which if you just go to Google and type that in um, you, you can download that it's very straightforward and if you're in any doubt there must be a thousand videos on YouTube showing you how to do that okay and set it up with a Hotmail account alright so I suggest you do that if you want to get this to work and uh, I, I, as I said I've tested it with Outlook uh, all versions up to 2010 I've tested it with Outlook Express which is no longer available uh, but it's the old uh, uh, um, software that came standard with Windows and Windows Live Mail um, it works perfectly 10 times out of 10 so we uh, select email hit the send and that happened very fast but you can see here it's created a letter for us for the uh, dear Mr Robert Jenkinson all right now if you know this chap this is the nice thing about this if you know this chap you can you can e alter each one before it goes out and so uh, you know this person by his first name you've known him a while and so you'd hit the send button on that I'm not going to do that because that's a fake ISP, uh, that's a fake um, email address uh, so you would send that and that brings you to the next one again you could edit it in any way you so fancied before hitting the send button or, or not as the case may be just send them straight out and the third and last one is that one You'd hit the send and that's it they would have gone all right and as I don't know if you remember me telling you that there is a fourth one in here that didn't have an email address so we go to the non email and that will print out a letter just as a standard one would do except um, it's filtering out all the ones that have already been sent by email okay and that sends him the letter you just print that out as you would do normally and uh, put it in an envelope and stick a stamp on it uh, the labels don't need to explain those um, they are exactly as they were before and uh, really you shouldn't need to use those if you're using window envelopes with your uh, letter or your non-email alright and that's all there is to it